Hello and welcome. We've all passed an area of waste ground and imagined how wonderful it could look with trees and bushes and wildflowers. Well, sometimes dreams do turn into reality, and an area that once was open space opposite the new Balfour Hospital in Kirkwall is today Arcadia Park. And with me is the man who designed it, Paul Green, and he certainly has the right background with over 50 years of experience as a landscape architect. When studying geography at Glasgow University, he specialised in soils and in what was then called biogeography and is today's ecology, and he applied those skills to the full in the creation of Arcadia Park. So, Paul, welcome. And if we start by going back in time some years to think about that land, what were your first priorities in starting off the transformation? Well, it was in 19, uh, 20, uh, no, 2019, I'm sorry, um, that we got a call from the council asking if we could design a park. There was a pot of money uh, and uh, it had to be spent within four months. So we had to do a rapid survey of the site, which was we found to be a waterlogged semi-derelict site, which had been used for years as a, uh, a disposal area for inert fill from local building projects so it was it was designated as a public open space but it wasn't really usable because of the water logging so first thing was to find out what the soils were and where the water was coming from then uh, consult with people to do a sketch proposal uh, to get some ideas of what the local people including children wanted and that turned out to be a whole list of things which I could go into detail on uh, but essentially it was uh, a space where people could get away from it all, a, a place where they could uh, perhaps ride a bike and or have a walk, sit down and have a, ch a bladder in and a natural was, environment. Uh, I was going to say, just thinking about when you said those words, sit down, I was thinking about all that water and the water logging. So was that one of the first actions to find a way of doing something with the water? And if so, how did you go about it? Okay, yes, the hydrology is really quite complex. There are at least three springs on site. It's, the, it's on the base of a slope and it's on the edge of a floodplain. So the hydrology is very unpredictable, uh, which led us with a slight problem in terms of uh, how to control water. But we did a cutoff drain. Uh, one of my early careers was working on coal reclamation, which you uh, you can imagine that you have a lot of problems with managing large floods of water. So a cut-off drain was was wrapped around the site, uh, and the series of uh, interconnecting drains, which managed the water movement by and large uh, through the site in an effective way. Uh, we added additionally some uh, water features. So we wanted areas to hold water for a ministry reasons, also for wildlife reasons. Now, the soil, Paul, you were saying about it being used for, for landfill. I mean, this is clearly not typical garden or park soil. How did you go, go about tackling that? Well, um, the, the, the soil was a problem. I'm glad to say that we've largely resolved that. Uh, but the, 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 because it's waterlogged, you get something called a glay, around about two to three foot. It's an inert anaerobic uh, layer, which really impedes plant, plant growth. So we had to penetrate that. So the next stage, having looked at the drainage, was to invert the soil. So we brought that anaerobic layer to the surface, aerating the soil in doing so, and providing a reasonably friable open soil in which to plant. That would require a lot of excavation. Was that with, with spades and forks or did you have to get machinery? We had a team of uh, 368 excavators, 17 ton excavators with uh, something which is called a swivel bucket, which was particularly adept at doing what I've described. You know, uh, inverting the soil, flipping the, the, basic, uh, the, the surface of the soil on itself. And when you've inverted the soil, was there a need to do enrich it in some kind of enrichment? No, because essentially you, 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 it's clays, and clays is in, are incredibly nutrient rich. Uh, 
but organic poor, you know, it was and, and prone to con compaction. So we we created a series of hillocks which uh, uh, replicated the sort of landscape you might find in a in, in, actually in a, an old woodland when trees fall down. That's what we're trying to do. So having uh, a range of if you like small micro habitats. Some which would be dry, some which would be, you know, prone to uh, holding water, others which would be south facing, east facing. So getting a mosaic of different landforms was a great starting point for cre uh, creating a diverse habitat. And did that mean shaping what the planting very much around these different micro habitats? Very much so, yes. And uh, we wanted to, in, the, in the long term to, to achieve um, a mid-climax woodland. What I mean by that is the sort of woodland that you may find in a park, you know, where uh, you've got some mature trees, but all the juvenile trees, uh, but with glades where people can enjoy and, and, and kids can play in particular. Uh, so we've, we've had uh, pioneer species of trees and part of what we're hoping to do with uh, people from the science festival is to introduce the next phase of trees, which are the mid succession trees. So, they, they, so we want to plant 50 sorbus area white beams, which grow particularly well in Orkney. And I, uh, we've got uh, 50 two year old plants, which we want to get, we want to, uh, to plant as part of the festival. Now, you've been particularly good at mobilising the community, and uh, I think there was some great planting as well in, in the early days. Well, we have. Uh, 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 right from day one, we've had volunteers planting. School kids, uh, the army cadets, sea cadets, uh, people from Highland Park, uh, local residents. We've planted oh, in the order of 8,000 woody plants, mostly trees. Uh, and we've planted a further thousand this year, uh, working on the basis of wanting to plant a, uh, uh, plant a tree in 23, which turned out to be planted near a thousand. We, we're up to 850 at the moment for this year. So that eight, that, that, so collectively we've got eight and a half thousand. So we want to uh, plant hundred, we have got trees for, to plant in November, uh, which will make the thousandth this year. So we're, uh, we quite think we, we quite like that idea of being able to say that th this year was a special year for tree planting, and now, we'll repeat it. Plant some more in twenty four. <laughs> now and now with trees, there'll I guess be some particular species that would go well, some that might might and might not, and some that definitely wouldn't. How did you go about prioritising? Oh well, it, it, it is an experiment. And rightly so, and it's a lot, an eight acre experiment. Uh, so we, we will expect some failures, uh, with some things which will not perform very well. So far, I can only think of uh, a couple of failures which have, which have uh, been surprising. We, uh, we planted some plants which were, um, um, well, they, well, grown. Uh, they grow typically on the hip, the, the toe of the Himalayas. We haven't, we, uh, and they haven't succeeded. Um, so uh, some large scale cutaneasties. We have uh, otherwise had some great results. And what were the particularly good trees? Because I I can imagine people listening with similar challenges, wondering what would the, be the, the good oh. ones to go for. Well, the star of the show has been almost glutinosa, the common older, uh, and that uh, we that 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 was probably sixty percent of the nurse crop. So, out, out of the six thousand, four thousand were olders, most of the glutinosas, a, a sprinkling of incarnas, um, and they're particularly suited to damp water lock sites because they've got their own chemistry set in their roots. They produce nodules of nitrogen fixing. Uh, um, biochemistry, which uh, has really promoted uh, the the in, in the 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 soil biology, we're finding that already we've got uh, quite a lot of carbon locked in the soils. We have we don't know how much, but it's, and we we sequestering carbon, which we're recycling carbon, 
um, as well as you know storing it there. So there's another benefit there. So well, old is a good, uh, sycamores are good, rowan are good, uh, sorbus area, the ones we're planting in a few weeks' time, uh, are also reasonably successful. Um, Amalinkia canadensis, that's from, as the name implies, Canada. They've done, been slow, but now starting to thrive. And are the trees helping, and, and all the vegetation, are they helping the soil itself now to transform and develop? Tremendously. And we have now, uh, we've got some fungi showing uh, that we've got some uh, mycorrhiza already establishing it's only four and a half years old this site and I think there was very little if any mycorrhiza uh, networks now we're getting clear evidence that you know, the, we're getting uh, a, a really interesting uh, solid development um, you usually I would usually expect to get mycorrhiza of this sort year 15 and it's year four and a half and year five that we've got we've got some uh, um, some mycorrhiza and and fruit and bodies it's really very impressive and i'm surprised about, and what about wildlife well we we have damselflies which is always and i was one um uh, species where I look for as an indicator that it, it does the site work well. We have a significant number of birds. I'm not an authority on, on uh, entomology or, or, or ornithology, but uh, I am told by people who are, uh, particularly the field cub of Orkney, they, they've regularly visited and they found on some of the willows, um, hawks, head, moths, glavy, um, Cassibilis. So I think yeah, I think we're doing quite well on that front. Oh, frogs abound already. You know, we uh, you've got to be careful where you walk because the frogs are so numerous in parts. This is a wonderful place to visit, and people are going to be able to visit on the Saturday morning of the, the Science Festival, Saturday the the ninth of September at mm. ten o'clock, on a tour with with you, Paul, and with Bob McKenzie, who yes. came up with the the idea originally. And you yes. mentioned um, a moment ago that, that that people will have an opportunity to plant two trees as well. That's right. Yes, we um, it's we you. Yes, we've got. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got some trees we need to plant, and we've got we've got three different types of two different locations we could try these out on. One is um, um, next to alders, which are we're going to coppice uh, and introduce the this white beam. Another is is bare ground, and another is established meadow. So we'll we'll be able to compare and contrast the performance of the trees, as we've so been doing throughout. So people can come out there and plant their trees and then come back in a few months time or a year's time and see who, whose trees are doing best. That's right. And I'd leave it out with, with trees. It's probably best to wait for two to three years, the, the, the root development before, before the extension growth becomes noticeable. Uh, it's, it's probably the third year, which is the best year to come. We have trees now, which are, uh, 15 foot plus. Now, we, st we the, they all started at two to three foot, not a single tree we planted higher, and we've got them within four and a half years up to 15 foot. Now, that compares really well with any part of the country which I've worked on, including the south of England, uh, the uh, Lancashire and Cheshire. You know, the trees grow well in Orkney. This is going to be fascinating for people to see. So on Saturday the 9th, Paul, they'll have a chance to plant two trees and you'll be able to show them some of the examples, the, the alders and other. There'll be a range of highlights, in fact, for them to see. Well, we have mentioned the ecology, but we, we are rather proud of uh, a piece of sculpture which has been donated by a wonderful uh, local artist. Uh, and this is all, well, I think we might just leave it for people to come along and see. We'll, we'll have a, a, a limited surprise, but it is very impressive. 
uh, and uh, it is a wonderful focal point. Paul, this is something for everyone to look after. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, whetting our appetite, and we hope you'll get sunshine all the way on the morning of Saturday the 9th of September for a visit to the aptly named Arcadia Park. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.